All right, in this video, we're going to continue this theme of using number lines to understand integers uh, and integer operations. With this video, we're gonna apply that to multiplication. Now, multiplication is really cool. Um, it's quick, it's gonna be a quick lesson for the students. They're gonna pick up on the patterns and you're gonna be able to move from developing understanding to practice in a very quick fashion. Uh, so let's get started with this. Um, so we're going to begin by defining multiplication as copies of a move. All right, copies of a move. So let's talk about what that means. So uh, let's see, three times four means three copies of a move to the right. To the right. All right, so three times four means three copies of moving to the right four. So we have to begin with our zero somewhere. I'll put it right here. So there's my zero. And we're gonna have three copies of four. One, two, <laughs> oops. <laughs> I went too big. Okay, my, my arrows are too big. Okay, let's make it a little smaller. Okay, so um, three copies of four. One copy of four, another copy of four, and another copy of four. The question is, where do we end up? All right, well, if we go three copies of four and we wanna know where we end up, we end up, in this case, 12. On the right side of the zero, so <clears throat> it's 12. It's positive 12. All right, so now let's take a look at uh, three times negative four. So three times negative four, so right here, this means three copies of negative four. So three moves of negative four. So I'm gonna put it way to the right this time. And I'm gonna go, okay, well there's one copy of negative four. Here's another copy of negative four. And lastly, here's the final copy of negative four. So where do we end up? Right here. Where do we end up? Well, we end up at negative 12 because of course we are on the left side of the zero. So, so far, oops, I don't know how that little line got there. Okay, good. Um, so, so far, it's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> now with this negative three times four. All right, technically this means Negative three copies of four? Well, that doesn't make sense. How do you have negative three copies of anything? You can only have positive copies of something, right? So negative three copies of four, we're gonna take advantage of the fact that we can, and I'll do it in, oh, let's do it in red. We could take advantage of the um, commutative property and we can switch the order, and now we get four copies of negative three. You can, because multiplication is commutative, we could swap the order. Now we have four copies of negative three. Well, what is four copies of negative three? Well, let's put it, there's our zero. Now we need four copies of negative three. One copy of negative three, another copy of negative three, a third copy of negative three, and then a fourth copy of negative three. And where do we end up? Oh, look at that. We end up at negative 12. All right. Now, had I had I drawn it really carefully, these, these negative 12s would have lined up, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. These are empty number lines, merely helped, uh, designed to help students make sense of the answer. Um, so now we have, so we know that negative three times four is negative 12. So we've got this sense going on here. All right, now the big question, and that's pretty easy. The students are gonna start to recognize that, well, it looks like you can just multiply the absolute values and get that magnitude. And they're gonna start, we're gonna want our students to start looking for some sort of pattern. Well, how do we recognize whether the answer is going to be positive, like in this case, or negative, like in this case. But we've got one more example. Oh my gosh, what do, what do we do with negative three times negative four? 
So negative three times negative four is a little on the tricky side because you can't use the commutative property to make sense. We either have, I mean, take a look at this. We either have negative three copies of negative four or we have negative four copies of negative three. Neither of those like metaphors make sense. You can't have negative something copies. So we're gonna have to kind of take advantage of all of our collected data that we've collected so far, and we're gonna organize it into a table in order to make sense of it. And here is the table. So what that table is going to look like what that table represents is um, a times tables. So this right here, this is a four, and that means, and a negative four. So four times negative four, four times negative three, four times negative two. Now we know all of those answers. Four copies of negative four. Oh, that's easy. That's four copies of negative four is negative 16. And then four copies of negative three. Oh, that, we could do that. That's negative 12. And then four copies of negative two. Oh, we could do that. That's negative eight, negative four. Uh-oh, four copies of zero. What is four copies of zero? Well, that's a zero. And then four, four copies of one. Well, that's a one. Now we're, I mean, uh, that's a four. So now we're suddenly <clears throat> in our normal third grade multiplication, 4, 8, 12, 16. Now we can immediately fill in the first uh, one, one, two, three, four, and five, five rows, because we know how to multiply a positive number times anything using our copies of this, all right? So I'm gonna quickly fill out uh, everything that we know so far based on our collected data over here with our number line. So this is great practice. I'm gonna do it really quick. And at this point, we're starting to look at, uh, we're collecting all of our data, and what we want students to start to do is look for patterns. What patterns are they noticing? Well, we're noticing things are, are counting by fours, threes, twos, and ones. We might be noticing that when we go into our negatives, uh, it's, it's symmetrical, except now we have this negative sign on the left side. So we're gonna have students start to recognize tons and tons of patterns. In fact, they're gonna notice, oh, look at all these zeros. And we can, in fact, we can take advantage of that and just, we could finish filling in all those zeros because we know zero times anything is gonna be zero, right? And so zero times zero, <clears throat> I mean, zero times anything is zero, and then zero times anything is zero. Now, we know we can fill in down here why? Well, because remember the commutative property, this is a positive times a negative. So this really means one copy of negative one. So one copy of negative one is negative one. And this means two copies of negative one. So that's gonna be negative two, and then negative three and negative four. So then we can kind of fill in this one as well. One copy of negative two is negative two. And then two copies of negative two is negative four. And so we could just continue filling in this little quadrant area down here. And now, <clears throat> we start to really map everything out, and all of a sudden, here is our last remaining portion. And this is, of course, where we have a negative times a negative, a negative two times any of these negatives, a negative one times any of these negatives. So this is the whole money shot where we're trying to figure out what is negative three times negative four. So let's take a look at this pattern. 
what kinds of patterns do we notice that are going to help us get this answer down here? Well, if we look at a column or a row, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which column or which row we're going to see a pattern. So let's start with our negative fours, this one right here. So we have negative 12, we have, ne I mean, uh, negative 16, we have negative 12, we have negative eight, we have negative four. So what's going on? Now, some students are gonna say, oh, it's going down each time because they, they're just looking at the magnitudes. And really what we need students to recognize is, no, 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 no. It's not going down each time. It's actually getting bigger each time. Negative 16 and negative 12, it got bigger by four. It got bigger by four, bigger by four, bigger by four, which means when, when we keep going, we're gonna add by four, which means it's going to be four, eight, 12, and 16 positives, isn't it? And then same thing in this column. Oh, look at this, 12, negative 12 to negative nine is getting bigger by three. So it keeps getting bigger by three, which means starting at the zero, we've got three, six, nine, and 12. Same story, two, four, six, eight. And then lastly, we have one, two, three, four. And now we're able to finally see the entire uh, pattern that, look at this, a negative number in, in this, like in this area right here, those numbers, oh, let's do it in green. <clears throat> These numbers down here are all positive numbers, aren't they? And then in fact, we can see these numbers over here, way in the upper right hand corner, are always positive. And then where are our negatives? Well, we could see that our negatives are in the lower right corner, and then our negatives are in the upper left corner. All right, so now what is our pattern? What are we noticing? Oh, these negatives are the result of a positive number being multiplied by a negative. These negatives are the result of a positive number being multiplied by a negative number. And then these positives right here are the result of a positive times a positive. And then lastly, these positives are the result of a negative being multiplied by a negative. Oh, look at that. So now we know that negative three times negative four is positive 12. So all of a sudden we know that negative three times negative four is a positive 12, which for a lot of students, that is a surprise answer. But that wraps up multiplication, the idea of using your number line to make sense of problems that we know and to collect data, copies of a move, and that's only works with positive numbers, right? And you may have to utilize the commutative property to take advantage of that copies of a move. But then what do we do when both numbers are negative? At that point, we have to switch to looking at the collected data in a table. And then when we see that collected data and make sense of the patterns that are in that table, we recognize that, oh, a negative number multiplied by a negative number always gives us a positive answer. All right, so let's wrap all this up into a nice tidy set of rules that um, summarizes what we discovered, all right? So we noticed in the upper left-hand corner that when you're multiplying a positive by a negative, you get a negative answer. We noticed down in the lower right-hand corner there we go, that when you're multiplying a negative times a positive, you get a negative answer. And we knew that because of that commutative property. You can always swap it and change the order and you'd still get the same essential problem all right, with the commutative property. Now, in the upper right-hand corner, we discovered that a positive times a positive 
is equal to a positive. That's third grade multiplication times tables that we learned back in third grade. And then down here in the lower left hand corner, this is the biggie that we discovered. The, the, the thing we discovered is that a negative times a negative for some students, this is crazy and counterintuitive, the answer is positive. So there is our summary. When the signs are different, positive and a negative, negative and a positive when they're different the answer is negative when the signs are the same in this case two negatives or in this case two positives the answer is positive that wraps up multiplication our next video is going to be uh, how do we take this understanding of multiplication and apply it to division it's super cool and we're going to teach kids how to understand the math not just memorize some silly rules. We're gonna help students make sense of those rules so they don't have to memorize it because it just makes sense.